time. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Kagiyama, and I'd like to welcome everyone here to to be your own hero. I'm a stage four prostate, bone, and lung cancer patient. Been dealing with cancer since early 2021, and things are going great. Really, really good. Um, don't have any updates at this point in time, but I'll be uh, seeing my oncologist here shortly. So I will give an update, but as far as I know, everything is pointed in the right direction and moving forward very nicely. So with that, I am really excited about my guest today because he's a returning guest. In fact, the subject that we spoke of the last time was not about him because at that time he did not have cancer or wasn't diagnosed with cancer. And so I'd like to bring on my friend and one of the biggest joys on the internet, um, Mr. Positivity himself, Russ Hedge. Russ, please introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about who you are again. Re refresh everybody's memory. Well, Mark, thank you so much. I mean, that was woo, quite an intro. Thank you. <laughs> you are you are such a great friend, and I will pay you later. Um, so make sure it's it, make sure it's in cash. You know, you, you okay, can send yeah, that make sure. mail. So. Unmarked twenties is that what we decided? That'll work. Okay, That'll work. all right. <laughs> so you know, I uh, what a blessing. Uh, you are in the community that I have been blessed with online. I mean, I have such a great community around me uh, where I live, but it's expanded worldwide because of this crazy thing called the internet. My name uh, is Russ Hedge, and I am uh, a marketing coach, keynote speaker, uh, live stream producer. And now I am also um, having to deal with cancer. And so... Um, it's been quite a journey so far, and I'm just kind of right in the middle of it, honestly. Um, I do uh, always keep a positive attitude, always trust God and believe that uh, there's better things ahead and that he's got things under control. So that goes without saying. I'm always that way. I'm doing my best in the midst of times when I don't feel great uh, to remember that. And usually I reach out to other people and try to encourage them because that helps encourage me. Um, I have always been a very positive mindset person. I have got a great perspective on life. I was blessed by God and a, my uh, mama, who was super positive. She was the happiest person I know. Um, she passed away about uh, almost going on a year ago uh, from Alzheimer's. Uh, but even through her Alzheimer's journey, she was positive. And so, um, you know, I've been blessed by that. So that helps me because that is my makeup and that, you know, makes some things a little bit easier for me. Um, but, uh, you know, really when I've got into this whole thing, I met Mark and and uh, Tim Stone and I were already good friends and a whole bunch of people uh, that have also dealt with cancer and this whole community that is formed. And Mark, you're a big part of that. It's really been such a blessing to me because it gives you. Uh, people you can talk with, Ter you know, Terry Tucker, who you know well, um, he has exactly or had exactly the same, no has because he's still dealing with it, the exact same cancer that I have. And so it's very, very interesting to be able to talk with him. He had his 11 years prior to me being diagnosed. Uh, but, you know, this whole community brings you such amazing people. So it's been a blessing. Thank you for having me on here. And, uh, yeah, I just I just love chatting with you, Mark. Oh, likewise, likewise. And that's why I'm so excited to, uh, you know, explore this uh, new situation for you and 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 how you're handling it. it you, you know what is, you know, before we really get into the meat of it. Is. How incredible. Is a positive you know, when you're constantly just throwing out positive attitude, it, it, it's just so amazing what comes back to you. Uh, you know, why don't we talk about that first and then we'll sure. talk about your diagnosis because I, oh, yeah, it, it's I'd just a rather. fascinating thing to me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'd way rather talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, your positive attitude it reflects on everything that you do. And, you know, let's, let's be honest, even those of us that are super positive 
and uh, are blessed with the ability to be that way a good share of the time, we still have our down moments. We still have our times when we're negative and we don't feel good. And and we think it it's kind of a bummer and it kind of sucks right now what I'm going through. I mean, we all have that, right? But it's a matter of not staying in the emotions when you're down and when you're when you're really feeling low. It's a matter of letting yourself go through those because you got to experience that and bring yourself back to a point where you can say, you know what? Hey, God's in control. I'm really I always say the blessings of my life way outweigh the the negative things of my life. So, I mean, I've been blessed with a beautiful wife, a family that helps me stay positive and so many great friends like you, Mark. I mean, whether they're here in Oregon or whether they're around the world, it's been amazing, the support. And so that's a big deal. And that helps me stay positive. And it's scientifically proven the positive attitude will help you do better in whatever you're going through. It will medically make you come through that situation better. Doesn't mean it's always perfect. Doesn't mean that everything always happens the way you want it to, but it's definitely going to be better. And I always say the alternative is not so good. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, why not be that's, positive, right? That's for sure. Plus, plus we have to, we have to practice what we preach, you know, what we throw out there. We have to follow through ourselves because, you know, otherwise we're frauds, Right. And it's, yes, and it can be challenging. I mean, it can because you're saying all the stuff that you truly believe, and then you get hammered with something, you know, you got you to deal with that. And you've got to, you know, and that's one thing I think God has really um, blessed me with the opportunity to encourage people that are struggling, whether you have cancer or whether you have something else. And so what I've done is, you know, I had so many people asking me, and it was impossible for me to get around to everybody. So I did. I started at the very beginning of my journey, putting a post on Facebook and LinkedIn. Mostly Facebook covers my family and, and people that are close to me or people I went to school with or whatever. And then the LinkedIn covers the whole new community around the world. And what I found was people appreciated knowing what to pray for and what to, you know, what was going on with me, but also it gave me an opportunity. I just put a little snippet of what's happening with me. And then I put down information to encourage them, telling them I'm, I trust God's going to take care of things. I believe that everything's going to be work out great and that I'm keeping a positive attitude. No matter what happens, I'm trusting God and keeping a positive attitude. And so, you know, I do that to encourage people. And it's really been a blessing because I just hear from so many people how encouraging that is. And I'm thankful that I have that opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. Let's, let's get into what's going on with you. What's happening, Russ, since we last did an interview on this channel, uh, things have shifted dramatically. So if you could share that with us and, and, you know, share your, your journey with us. Yeah, it has been quite a journey already. And Yes, a lot has happened. What's going on with me right now is almost overwhelming at times. Um, and it doesn't even have to deal with the cancer itself. I'll get to that in a moment. But I started off uh, in uh, last summer. Actually, um, I had something on my foot. It felt kind of like a callus. Leo, my beautiful wife looks at it and says, I think it's a wart. So went to I, I got some wart stuff and started just treating it. And then um, about a month or so into it, um, I said, yeah, I don't think this is a word. And she said, why? I said, well, because it's grown. At that point, it was smaller than a quarter, but it had, it had grown a lot and it was black. And she goes, yeah, I think you better go to the doctor. And so I did. I went to the dermatologist who checks over my body for any skin cancer things. And they biopsied it, it came back invasive melanoma stage 2A is what it was. And so they immediately referred me to OHSU, which is a great hospital in Portland, close to where I live. And so I went up there and by the time I got up there, they did another biopsy because they found another spot close to that one. And it also was melanoma. And so um, they said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a surgery. We got to cut out about half your end step. And then the plastic surgeon, who is uh, number two, first was the oncologist surgeon, plastic surgeon is going to jump in 
He's going to move your skin over from the other side of your foot, take some skin out of your groin area, patch it all up and give you a new instep. And then we're also just to make sure we're going to do what's called lymph node mapping, map your lymph nodes in your leg and see if it traveled anywhere. We think we caught it early. You'll be fine, but we're going to take out a lymph node or two and see what we find. Okay. So I'll go through the surgery, about a five hour surgery. And that was a recovery because I couldn't walk for six weeks. And so that took quite a while, but right off the bat, they had taken out that lymph node and within the week they call me and they said, well, not super great news. Um, we found cancer tumor in the lymph node in your groin area. And now your cancer has elevated to stage three C. And I'm like, what? I mean, it's kind of you, like, you don't even understand what's going on. Right. That night, you know, my son called, my daughter was here. Um, she lives in the area. My son called from California and he and his wife were on the phone and he, I'm trying not to say anything to him because I'm trying to figure it all out, you know, and, and just, you know, stay positive and not worry about it. And then he makes uh, the statement or he asked me the question. So dad, what were the, what were the results? What happened? And of the, you know, the, the lymph node they took out. And I'm like, so as soon as he tells me that I start to tell him and I look up and my wife and daughter are both crying. So I start sobbing and my son then can't even talk because he's crying. He doesn't even know what's wrong. And so we went through that moment of, okay, kind of the getting over the shock. I mean, going through the shock that this is really happening, right? It's something we're going to have to deal with. So anyway, they, they put me through treatment. The first round of treatment um, went no side effects, no problem except for being really tired other than that. And let, let, let me pause you right there. I want to yeah. uh, talk about a point that you brought up. You, you told them, even though you were reluctant to tell them, but how do you feel about that now as far as, you know, making sure that your immediate family knows uh, about a diagnosis such as this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I always plan to tell them shortly. I was just trying to get through, you know, the night and, and get, you know, really wrap my brain about it and all that. And uh, no, I think that's so critical. You need to let people know you can't isolate yourself. You need to let p others know, uh, get community, family and community around you, because that has you know, other than God himself has what's pulled me through, right, is my beautiful wife, my family, and my community. And so I think that's critically important, Mark. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that that's what I think are important ingredients to building your foundation so that you can move forward in this journey. Those yeah. are critical steps because the people around you I hear so many people that don't want to tell their family or immediate family. I, I just don't understand that because your family needs to know as soon as possible uh, so yeah. that, you know, they could help you uh, deal with it. Right. And, and they have, I mean, tomorrow I'm going to my oncologist surgeon and my sister, my beautiful wife has to work. Uh, she's a librarian at an elementary school. She, I, I try not to, you know, she was taking off a lot of time at first helping me out. My sister doesn't work outside the home. And so she's able to come and get me and do things. So that's been great. And so that, again, that's my family helping me out doing things. And my wife and daughter did the brunt of it and still do. My wife does the majority of it. And uh, my daughter and my sister have been huge help. So I, um, you know, it was interesting. So I went through that phase, Mark. You want me to keep going? Sure. Okay. So I went through that and then it found more cancer in my uh, groin area, which is still there uh, because they, they gave me two options. You could do treatment, a new drug, or you can do surgery. But they both really thought treatment was the best path to start because they said treatment affected my whole body. And if there were little microgreens, you know, even though they had found nothing from the waist up, there could be little microgains of cancer that could develop. And this treatment will help your whole body, not just the one spot where we know where it is. They said, that's not going anywhere. It's there already. So let's try the treatment. And so I prayed about it. I thought about it because my initial gut was take it out, cut it out, be done, be done. That's what I wanted to have done. And so I thought about it. Both the doctors called me over the weekend 
talked to me, both my oncologist over the treatment and my oncologist over the surgery. And um, I decided to do the treatment. So one treatment into it, it's the first week after treatment. It starts okay. But then partway into the week, I start getting rashes. And by the end of that, well, by a few days later, I was pretty much to the point where you could take the list of side effects and just go check, 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 check. I mean, I was pretty much having everything from uh, high fever to, and, you know, everything that goes with that to throwing up, being sick, to being, um, you know, to having the rashes, all that stuff. And so my doctors in all their wisdom, and they are great doctors, they are, said, hey, we got some stuff that will help you with that. Um, little did I know that the treatment had started to elevate my blood sugar, not crazy numbers, but it had started the process. And so they gave me a prednisone along with other stuff to offset these symptoms. Challenge there was the prednisone shot my blood sugar sky high. So suddenly my pancreas decided to quit working properly, wasn't creating enough insulin for my body, and my blood sugar was all over the place, along with a few other issues, but that was the main one. So this is where I find myself now is dealing with that. And I could talk more about that, Mark, but I'll let you jump in there. You, you know, what is going through your mind at this time as far as your relationship with your family and, and treating what you have moving forward? You know, how, how did you assimilate that? Well, I mean... I can't even say enough about my family and, and people that have helped and supported me. So, I mean, as far as relationship wise, you know, it's, it's tough. My, you know, my wife carries a lot of, um, of the, she worries about me, right. She's worrying about where I'm at, what's going on, what's going to happen. And why can't I move forward? Cause right now I'm in a, I'm in a holding pattern. And so it's really, it is tough on your family members because they have to deal with all that. My wife and my son and daughter-in-law, they're all, you know, my sister, they're all really concerned about me. So it makes it a strain, I think, on them. Actually, sometimes I think it's harder on them than it is on me, even though I'm the one going with it. It's harder on me physically, but I have a good, my, I'm able to normally um, give myself some quiet time, some peace, and, you know, just kind of move through it. Um, so that can be challenging, but it's become more challenging with where I'm at now because of this bl blood sugar thing, basically, Mark, and it's been a, three weeks of this, I think, something like that, two or three weeks, probably three, of me basically treating myself like a type 1 diabetic. So my body is acting like that. So I'm injecting long-term insulin in the evening uh, that just works 24 hours. And then just recently, they had me add the short-term that I inject before each meal. Um, so I'm having to test my blood several times a day. I'm having to inject insulin. It's still not leveled where it needs to be. And I just went to my doctor today that's helping me manage that. We adjusted up what I'm taking insulin wise and all that, because basically I'm gonna go, I, need, I wanna go to the oncologist and have them say, okay, we're gonna move forward with what we're gonna do for you with the cancer. Um, and until that happens, I'm in a holding pattern. That is one of the toughest things for me. I want to take action. I want to make a decision. I'm very decisive. And I'm also always wanting to take action on what's going on. And so without the ability to do that, that becomes more stress because then you think, what's the cancer doing this whole time while I'm you know, waiting to have them do anything um, because of this holding pattern? So it's been frustrating, to be honest with you. Um, and I just... Um, keep plowing through it honestly and i go to the doctor my, it seems like half my life is you know scheduled around <laughs> going to doctor's appointments i don't have to tell you <laughs> so yeah it's been frustrating so tomorrow i'll go to my oncologist surgeon see what he says uh, but the plan is ultimately um when they feel comfortable which hopefully is sooner than later surgery they'll they will remove all the lymph nodes in my upper groin area on the right side. And then, and that's pretty invasive surgery. They're telling me, and Terry went through that and he and I talked through it. They have to move muscles and nerves and they have to get all that stuff out. 
It's um, and they had to put in a drain port, and I'm going to be in the hospital for probably three days. Which nowadays, Mark, you know, if they keep you in the hospital one day, it's a pretty big deal because usually they cut you open, take it out, and they send you home. Good luck. <laughs> so I'm going to be in the hospital a few days, but then it's like a four to six week recovery. So it's going to be a process, but I'm ready to go through it if that's what I need to do. It's just a matter of getting to that point. So. I think this whole blood sugar thing has been a major, major hiccup, a major um, bump in the road, but God is still in control. I'm still going to move forward and I'm just going to take it one day at a time. How has, how has fear influenced your cancer journey? You know, I got to be honest with you from the very beginning of this whole thing, other than the initial shock and getting through it. I'm not a big worrier um, about life. I mean, I, I worry about, I do have one worry and that's about finances. That's been my my one hiccup in life, but I'm really not a big worrier. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I wrote stuff rolls off me and God gave me peace in the beginning of this. And I really have not been scared. I'm definitely not scared for my life because no matter what happens in my life, God's in control. I know where I'm going. I'm not worried, right? What what worries me the most is my family and making sure to take care of everybody and all that. But really, God has, for the most part, I mean, I'm like everybody. Let's I won't lie. We're all scared at times, right? We all have fear at times. But overall, I've really been at peace for the most part. I just get frustrated. I think the best word for me about the process when I can't do anything, I want to move. I want to do something. But yeah, I think fear hasn't played a gigantic part for me. That That's a beautiful answer. I love that answer. And, it, you know, we, we sow, we reap what we sow, and you throw out positivity all the time, and, and, and that's what you're sowing, and, and it comes back to you, and and I'm, I'm real familiar with some of the posts that you've made on LinkedIn about, about your cancer journey and, and all the support that, that you've been given, which has been really, really great. Can you talk about that? Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Well, what really blew me away was how many people really cared and really wanted to really wanted to know and to keep tabs on how I was doing. Um, starting with, you know, the first group was Facebook because that is my family, my friends from school, different people that I've known well over the years. And um, yeah, overwhelming uh, support there. And then LinkedIn blew me away because the first post I made, maybe partially due to my friend Mark, who might have had shared it a few times, but it was like over 60,000 people looked at that post initially. And there were hundreds that commented. People were praying for me from Uganda to to Russia, to Australia, to everywhere around the world. I mean, it was crazy. People I didn't even know were either giving me audio, little audio message prayers, or they were typing out a prayer and um, and so much support. And I thought, that is amazing. But the beautiful thing about that, because it did touch so many people, is I did get to do exactly what I said from the get-go. You've seen my posts, and it is a little bit about what's happening with me, but then it is working to encourage and inspire other people that through whatever you're going through, you can you can get through it and move forward, right? May not always work out the way we want. Hopefully it does, but you know what? We can get through it, and that is something we just have to deal with day by day. So are you doing anything? Have you changed your diet at all or, or, or things like that? Oh yeah. The, well, the, the um, diabetic uh, situation that I'm in has made me completely you haul it. I initially changed my diet to uh, work with foods that they said were good to help fight cancer and people that had it and different things you could do. So I did read some books and and um, started eating better. I mean, I always ate okay, not bad really. Cause my, my beautiful wife cooks great healthy meals, um, but I went ahead and started the process then, but the blood sugar thing, oh yeah. I mean, overnight I had to take out most of the sugars and almost everything has sugar in it. And you have to really start looking at, you know, how you're eating 
because the way you eat and what you put in your body elevates your blood sugar. And so um, pretty much everything you put in your body elevates at some amount. Um, and so that's why the, the shots I'm taking now before meals are what kind of help to offset that meal and hopefully bring you to a more, you know, level playing ground as far as your blood sugar. So anyway, the big answer to that is absolutely. And it looks like I have a long road of head ahead of doing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I I know what you mean. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. It's this is where your phone is great. I grab my phone. Hey, are eggs on the low glycemic index? Are uh, is pasta on the low glycemic index? I'm looking for on this index and all this information to find out where do these foods fall, so that I know whether they're good for me to eat or not. And that's been kind of my key that I've been taught so far is just that low glycemic index is where you want to be. Those kind of foods, and so that is what I've been I've been keeping at it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been fine. I get it. I still get to eat a lot. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not the quantity that you eat. It's the quality. No, But if I do want to eat quantity, the problem is I haven't with my blood sugar been that hungry. And so I've worked to, it's gotten better, but I work to eat enough. So I actually have to eat like five meal five meals a day, spread it out through the day. Um, and with that, all that, I've been losing weight and doing all that kind of stuff. You know how that goes. And so I'm trying to get all that even on an even keel. So my body will start storing some of that fat and good things to keep my weight where it is and maybe move up a little. I never thought I'd want to gain weight, but I actually do want to gain a little weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, what I wanted to do. Cause in 2021, I was down to 123 pounds. Oh. And then, uh, thanks to my daughter and 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 friends and 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 then I took over once I was able to, uh, you know, I I I shot up in weight, and so now, <laughs> what's hard for me is, I I shot way past the mark I should have been, not way past, but past, and, and to take off the weight now for me is is difficult because I can't work out in the same manner that I used to. So that's been a challenge, but I still work out and I just, you know, deal with things on a daily basis and, and, uh, you know, thankful, so thankful for incremental, uh, you know, progress. And, and yeah. it's, it's incremental. <laughs> it's, it's not well, it is definitely, it's definitely day by day, as you said. And, you know, I have really tried my best and my wife really encourages me all the time. I always have exercised in the mornings. I've always done stuff. So I've really tried to, even when I'm at my lowest point, I get on my stationary bike. And uh, what I've been doing recently is I ride at least 20 minutes because they said, actually it helps burn blood sugar. Um, but whether it does does much of that or not um because it hasn't made a profound effect on my blood sugar at least i'm able to get some exercise keep moving <clears throat> and then you know i've been feeling better lately so i'm back out walking my dog for and we walk for at least 20 minutes in the morning i went to the club today and lifted weights i'm trying to you know to do things and even when i'm not feeling the greatest i'm able to do those things still and i think that really it helps your mind and your body and as you're taking it one step at a time, one day at a time, you're still feeling like you're doing some good, healthy things. And hopefully, ultimately, Mark, that will help me gain some weight and I won't shoot way past my mark. Because um, <laughs> right now I'm I'm not down to where you were. I'm at, I'm at um, this morning, I weighed in at 157 point something, and that's below my high school weight. So they say, I mean, it's not like I... I think a lot of what you went through, um, from what I know, yeah, I can see why you lost all that weight. And I don't know where you started, but I started, you know, probably 20 pounds heavier. Well, a little bit more probably than 20 pounds heavier than where I am now. Um, so, I mean, for me, it's been, cause I wasn't big anyway, I was thin before. So it's made a pretty profound impact. Oh, totally get it. Totally get it. You know, it, it's, you know, part of the battle is doing your best 
to move forward when nobody's watching. You know, yeah. it's easy to do when somebody's watching you. Yeah. But most of the time, nobody is watching you. And so it's all on, all on you, all on me. And so t talk a little bit about that, and then uh, we'll go to final thoughts. Well, again, I was blessed. God created me with a good attitude, a good perspective. Uh, and so I'm that is my natural makeup. So the good part of that is, yes, I mean, when you're when you're isolated or alone, it can make you feel the weight more of what you're going through. But really, you know, I mean, I've honestly have found that I dive more into scripture and into uh, uh, times of just giving myself peaceful, quiet um, and really not like isolating alone, quiet, but like peaceful, quiet. I've been reading a whole lot more than I ever did before. And reading really helps me relax. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think those things have helped when I'm alone to really do that. And I always have had my quiet time in the morning. I have a good morning routine. I've kept that up. Even when I can't do nearly as much as I did before, I still do it. And um, so that's helped me a lot. I think that's what helps me get through it when everybody is not there helping me, you know, from the outside. Awesome. Awesome. So what are your final thoughts? What do you want to leave everybody with uh, this time, Russ? You know, I mean, you, you, I just love talking to you. I could talk to you for days, you know, but you're a, Russ is a really busy guy. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's hard to uh, <laughs> pin down sometimes, but. Uh, <laughs> well, yes. And thank you for that. But, but, you know, lately with everything going on, as you know, it makes you even busier because you got to manage so many things. Um, yeah. My final thought is you need to trust in something or someone um, no matter where you are in your life. I have, I am blessed with uh, that. I accepted the Lord in my life years ago and that Jesus is with me every day. And that's who I trust to carry me through, which especially when I'm alone, like I said, the scripture reading of things that carries me through that, that gives me strength, even when I'm at low points. Um, but there's always hope. I did a newsletter this week on LinkedIn and my hope um, is obviously in the Lord, but my, I also have hope for a great life and good things. And I'm all the blessings that I've been blessed with the, my beautiful wife, my family, you know, my friends, uh, I have a, a house and I live in a beautiful town and there's so many blessings in life. And so focus on have hope and focus on the blessings in your life. Get away from focusing on the negative things in your life because we all have them. It doesn't matter if you have cancer or if you have some other disease or if you're just having a rough spot in life. You can choose, like my book says, you can live the life you choose. You can focus on the positive instead of the negative. It's up to you. And it is hard sometimes. It's way harder to do sometimes than it is to say. But you still have that choice and you still can do it. And I think that is the key to life. Have a good perspective, keep a positive mindset, focus on the positive, not the negative, and you'll always be better for it. That is awesome, Russ. You're awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for sharing uh, time with our, our audience. And uh, I, I mean, I know you're going to make it. I know you're going to be yeah. fine. Oh yeah. You know, we have, I'm a fighter. Yes, you are. And, and you've got support from us and, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to do another one when you're, when you're cancer free. That's for sure. There you go. Well, listen, I appreciate you so much, Mark, and thank you for having me on today. And what a blessing you are to me. Thank you for all the kind words. Oh, thank you so much. Um, with that, I usually read a quote or two positive quotes, but I can't top what Russ just said. I, I, I absolutely can't. So we're going to go with that. And let's all band together and help make this world better. And the only way it's going to get better is if we all do our share by spreading positive vibes, spreading positive attitude, helping somebody else out. You don't know what the other that other person is going through. I mean, you know, you see people walking by you all the time. You see the cashier at the store, at the bank. You don't know what they're going through. So 
why not smile and, and, and say something nice and say, hello, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. And that's the way this world is going to come together and become better again. And uh, we all need to do our share. So, you know, make the most out of every single day, every Amen. single hour, every single minute and every single breath. And with that, right. I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Thank you so much for us. Thank you for all for joining us here at the Be Your Own Hero. Please subscribe to the channel and we will see you next week. Thank you.